Well, hello. Hey, everybody. Hope you guys are doing well when this video finds you. I just really want to talk about um, just something that I think most of us at some point in our life have experienced, and especially with last year dealing with COVID. Um, this is something that affected people and still is globally. And one word on today, I want to talk about grief, grief, grief and grieving. Grief is a natural, um, it's a normal and natural, um, emotional, um, you know, experience to the loss. And I'm basically speaking in terms of loss of people, human beings, making it more personal, the loss of your father, your mother, sister, brother, best friend, coworker, whatever it may be, a loss. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and so, <clears throat> excuse me again, but what it is is this, um, with this emotion, and everybody experience or grieve differently. Um, how you may grieve may not necessarily be the way I grieve. You know, and people can't tell you or shouldn't tell you um, how to grieve or when you should stop grieving. But it definitely, uh, one thing I want to say that definitely I encourage you to go through grieving through the, 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 the normal process. And with grief, it comes so many different emotions. It can be very overwhelming. It can be uh, very stressful. It can affect you uh, mentally, physically. Um, it, grief, during that process, uh, you can go through many different stages. And when you suffer a loss, it brings you to a place of uh, understanding that that person that you were familiar with or you did life with, um, they are no longer uh, there with you. Um, you have now been separated by the grave, if I can say that. And so what was once familiar to you um, is no longer. And you have to learn to adapt to what we call um, reality or the new, as some as has been stated, the new normal. You have to go through adjusting to what you once had, what you once loved, once the what you once would see, touch, feel, hear their voice. They're no longer there, and there are so many different emotions that you go through when you're grieving the loss of a loved one. And oftentimes people really don't know how to express themselves. A lot of times you hear people say, well, uh, I have to be strong for the children. I don't want them to see me cry because if I cry, um, they won't be strong. It's not that when you, when you lose someone that is dear and special to you, I'm here to tell you that we must understand that we've been created and God has given us something that a tears and tears uh, serve so many different purposes it serves to uh, get irritants out of our eyes but it, it is also served that for us to release our emotions and crying is very therapeutic and often uh, when people don't cry uh, to some they may feel that that's showing that they're strong but you know we must understand that uh, the Bible says to everything, to everything, to every season, um, uh, there is a, a and a time up under every purpose uh, under heaven that a time to be born and a time to die. And unfortunately, um, you know, we must realize that that is going to happen. People will die. And we have to learn how to go through that process 
And so many people try to bury their pain. So many people don't want to deal with reality. They will rather place that person somewhere else or try to block them out of their mind. <clears throat> and that is not going to be healthy. You want to... You want to grieve healthy, meaning that there is a process. You have to go through the process. You have to feel the pain. You have to go through all these different emotions. Um, crying, crying, as I said, is very therapeutic. Talking about that person that has passed. Um, sharing the wonderful memories. Because often what people like to do, they like to take down the photos. They don't like to mention that person's name because they don't want to hurt. But I can tell you, um, I speak from experience. Uh, I, 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 my father passed uh, this October would be 21 years. Um, January marked five years of the passing of my mother. My oldest sister, uh, she passed actually uh, eight years ago. It, it would be coming up in May, June. Uh, my second older sister uh, passed um, unexpected. Um, you know, September was a year. I have a brother that was murdered uh, by gun violence. Um, so I know what it is to lose a grandmother, a grandfather, aunts and uncles, uh, friends, people that are very dear to me. I know what it is. But you have so many different emotions. And there are times now, you know, I remember when my mom passed, I told my husband, I said, you know what? I'm in a different category. I'm in a different place. I told him, I said, you're so blessed. You have both of your parents and I'm parentless. And that was just really, really something I couldn't wrap my mind around. And even at times now, you know, if I live to see it, I'll be 54 this year, and I'm like, I don't have a parent. And especially when you have wonderful parents, you want them to be around as long as they can be. But it's so many different types of emotions that you do go through and cherish the memories. I can tell everybody, I know when I get with my siblings, we, we often talk about um, our parents and different things. And there's still moments, uh, things sometimes I'm I'm, I'm about to call my mom. I'm like, I need to call mom and tell her this or, you know, different things. So I want to tell anybody that's, that's been trying or struggling and still going through that process because it's a continuous process. There are times I miss my mom and there are times I miss my dad. Um, actually, about a week ago, I was talking to my older sister and I said, girl, I had a moment, you know, um, it you know, it's a deep feeling on the inside. It's like down so deep. It's like uh, you're longing for them. You want to connect with them, but you can't co connect with them. And, and and that is something. But I thank God for the grace of God. I thank God for his love, for his comfort, for his strength. Um, that he blesses us to, to continue uh, going on and doing life. And I want to encourage someone on today that Find somebody, if it's been difficult for you, if you've been wearing a mask and trying to hold it all in and appear that everything is okay, it's not okay. You may look okay on the outside, but internally, when you grieve and you're constantly grieving, it does affect you physically. You can get to a place where you get depressed. You can get to a place that you no longer have an appetite. Um, you're just withering away. Uh, find somebody that you can talk to. First of all, tell anybody. Go to the Lord and pray. Talk to God. Find someone. Share your 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 moments. Share your feelings with your friends, uh, your siblings, uh, whether it's a husband, a wife, your children, or whoever it is. Learn to cherish the memories of that loved one. And every you know, like I said, talking about them is very therapeutic. Um, just looking at photos and video, if you have any video footage, it is so wonderful. You can put them in and you can hear their voice and you can see them and you can reminisce. It is just so wonderful. But I'm here to tell you that if somebody tells you 
to you should be over it or to get over it everybody deals with grief differently but what I do want to say if you haven't been dealing with the grief if you have not dealt with the loss if you have not accepted that that person is no longer doing life with you then you need to come to a place of digging deep within yourself and finding out what is your reason why you're not ready to accept this and you need to accept it and begin to start your healing process to start your healing journey because it is a journey it is a process that we all must go through and hey you know sometimes I walk in and I have a moment a, a cheer may come or I water up but I thank God that God brings me so much joy he he lifts me I don't stay in that place it's, it's only a moment and I'm so thankful for that but um, you you want to uh, deal with it and again as I said everybody deals with it differently but the main point I want to um, encourage someone is to deal with it you got to deal with it trying to bury something so that you cannot feel it trying to numb yourself as a means of cope, coping mechanism is not going to be good if you're constantly having to take pills to put you to sleep that is not good if, if you're uh, consuming alcohol or whatever your thing is, um, uh, uh, you're, you're smoking marijuana, whatever it is to, to take the edge off, to put you in another place, you're not dealing with it. I want to say to you, you got to deal with it. It has to be dealt with. The sooner you deal with it, you can become whole. You can become healthy. And then you can begin to talk about that person and you can begin to reminisce and, and just thank God for the time that you've had. But you have to come to a place of dealing with reality and embracing the new normal, the new. Yes, there will be difficult moments depending on the relationship. Maybe it was your spouse. Maybe it was your, your child. Oh, I can only imagine. Never have suffered the loss of a child. But I have seen my mom um, um, suffer the loss of a child. And I heard this story of when my brother was murdered. I actually was five years old and I do have great memories of my brother my sister told me that it really took my mom down emotionally it was very very hard for her because that was her third born her second oldest son and I, 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 I'm here to tell you that depending upon it it, it, it can be something, but I thank God he, he, he blessed her and, and, and raised her up and no issues behind that, but she had her process to go through. And <clears throat> I want to say this, uh, often people will go with you when you, they hear of a death, they will call you, they will check on you up until the time of the funeral. And what most people do after the funeral is over, for whatever reason, they think people are okay. They have given their condolences. They have showed up for the funeral and supported them. But I often say this. The real, the real, the real hits once the funeral is over. Because most of the time, people are having to deal with business. They're having to deal with the business size of the arrangements and um, getting with uh, making sure everything is in proper place, the body and where uh, the memorial service or the graveside service would be. So it's a lot of business, and they're dealing with uh, you know people coming to visit. So they really don't have time to deal with. But there will come a time when you will the phones calls the phone calls cease. No one is coming by, and you think you you've been forgotten, but. That's the time where you are really well begin to deal with all those different emotions and depending upon how that person died, uh, whether it was uh, a sudden death or a prolonged death or whether someone took their lives, the shock, many people are in shock. So when you're in shock, you have not even processed, your mind cannot even process because 
I'm here to tell you there there are times even now I can't even I know it's true I'm not here but just actually here and that's something that you have to ask God I had that was a prayer of mine I said God help me to process this reality because it can be very deep it can be very very just heavy I, I, I can't even describe it and if you have not really uh, experienced the loss of someone really close to you or dear to you keep living keep living and if you keep living you will probably be able somewhere to relate to what I'm talking about everybody can't relate and uh, you know how sometimes people have different uh, thoughts on different things and, and there's a saying but let it hit your house when it hits your house people have different perspectives on things prior to experience it but when it hits your house they have a different perspective but I, 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 I'm saying all of this to say this, you have to accept things. You have to realize that when that person died, you would never see them again in this life. you will never be able to embrace them. You'll never be able to talk to them, to them. And that's hard. That, that, is, that is a serious adjustment. That's a serious adjustment to come to. And you, you really have to ask God and you really have to be in tune to what your thoughts are. What are you thinking at every time? Like, um, because you're going to have moments, you're going to be sad. You're going to have moments that you don't feel like doing anything. You're going to have moments you don't want to, you want to just sleep. There are moments sometimes you might not want to eat. Uh, you're going to have those moments. You will have those moments. And I'm saying to you, it's okay. Give yourself a pass to, to, uh, Step back and do you because mentally, if you don't get that in check, the mind, the mind needs rest at times. The mind needs peace at times. You need to allow yourself to feel what you feel so that you can get to a place of accepting. You know, if you've been wearing a mask for people, take the mask off. Take the mask off and to thy own self be true. Get your healing. Get your help. If you need to talk to someone, talk to someone. If it's a dear friend, if it's a sibling, if it's your spouse, whoever it may be, somebody that you can be honest and open with so that you can get the type of healing that you need, do just that. Maybe you have to talk to your pastor. Maybe you have to talk to a minister. Do what you need to do. Maybe you need to talk to someone that, that, that's a counselor. And what basically counselors are do, um, they, they listen to you. They let you talk it out. And oftentimes people don't talk about it. They don't express why they feel, what they feel, or to tell you. Because a lot of times they say, but well, people may think I'm crazy or, or whatever. But do what you need to do. Because... Talking about it is therapeutic. When you can look at the photos, it's therapeutic. Don't shy away from it. Don't hide from it. Deal with it because you got to feel. You got to feel in order to heal. I'm going to say that again. You must feel in order to heal. Whatever is hurting you, you have to deal with it. So, uh, uh, this topic is, is such a wide topic. Uh, and, and, and grief can go into so many other areas. People grieve uh, the breakup relationships. Sometimes it may be with someone you're engaged to and they broke it off. It could be um, you're dating someone. Uh, uh, back in the day, we said courting someone, so it didn't work out. You're grieving, you're grieving, you spent time, you've invested into it. You may have purchased things together. Uh, such as maybe a home or a car or whatever is that. Uh, I'll say to anybody, uh, I'm, this is just me, my opinion. If, if you're not married to them, if they haven't put a ring on your finger and not married, you don't have their last name, you're buying a house with them. Because the tables may turn and you've invested a lot. And you may not, you know. <clears throat> so, whatever it is, well, I'm getting back to... The relationship. You may be grieving that because it didn't work out. You you gotta you gotta heal. You gotta heal. You gotta go through those emotions. 
And I'm going to say to anybody, if it didn't work out, don't get violent. Don't go cutting up tires and cutting up clothes and all of that. It doesn't know they have to react that way. Walk away with it with dignity. You know, you, you know, you're going to deal with maybe angry and hurt and all of those things, but do not react, which will make you look, make you look foolish or unintelligent or something like that. But you can be grieving the loss of a job, uh, a layoff unexpected, and being that you know you have bills, you have, you know, some people in your body agree with that. But I really want to say this, and I'm about to uh, close it out. When you're going through that time of loss of appetite, you have to make sure that you eat your meals, you nourish yourself back. That you're drinking your water and you're if you only stomach a piece of toast, eat a piece of toast. If you can only do a piece of fruit, do something. And hopefully life that will check on you, make sure that you're eating. Um, I know that that's something that I went through with my mother. I, I remember some months down the road. I, a couple of my friends, Demita, I don't know whether Demita will watch this, uh, my girl Trek sister, uh, such a sweetheart, and she had wrote, You're really losing that weight and I think somebody else, um, because I will always post my walking pictures every day. And then later on, my husband said, your, your face is sinking in. And you know what? That's what really got my attention. <clears throat> so I decided to go back um, to that day that I got that call, January 12th, about my mom. And I started, because I will always post, and I started just looking at the daily, daily, uh, some months in a row, and I actually begin to see um, the decline in my face. And from that, and what happens to that, I used to eat like each other. And because it went on, I, f I was finding myself maybe eating only one meal and it would be very, very late. So my, as a result, I would have to force myself to eat in the morning. And then later on, um, find something maybe uh, midday and again. And so that is something that I, I got just gave to me to be sensitive. And to really um, check on people, that's something that I normally do when I hear that a person has spirit loss. I will usually call them and encourage them to eat. And sometimes I, 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 I had a dear friend, um, I would have called her several times a day. She was in a very uh, she had such a traumatic, traumatic son. And I would call her and I would uh, just really talk to her and make her uh, encourage her to eat. And I had to do it, uh, I did this for months and months and months. And I've done it with others, but it makes I'm more sensitive to that. And I encourage them. Um, because when you help others and they go through the process, right, you'll find yourself, you're going to have to help somebody walk through the process. That's what it's about. Um, we got to get healed and do it the right way. We're compassionate unto them and we would do the same for them. So I'm going to end this video and um, I just hope that somebody that may have not really allowed themselves to go through the grieving process will begin to um, get in touch with themselves. Get in touch with your mind and why you're thinking and why you're trying to share what you're sharing. And um, begin to talk about it. Begin to talk about it. And uh, another thing, um, a lot of times people will grieve a person differently. If sometimes when people have not been there, say for instance you had a parent and you didn't visit your mother or father or grandparent or whoever it may be, you knew of their illness, you could have come by and helped out. You didn't. You didn't help with this. You didn't. Um, maybe when your siblings can come and say, oh, whatever. Some people experience guilt. And when they're to die, they're going to be, uh, a lot of times, they're going to be detached. They're, they're not really going to be able to grieve. They want to. So they have a sense of being guilty, uh, feeling guilty. And, you know, some are saying, uh, you know, back in the day, growing up and say, well, no, I just really acted out, so to speak, if you don't want to because they do their part. But if that's you, I want you to uh, forgive you and deal with it. You know, make up your sibling and say, hey, I see where I wasn't there. And, you know, I really had a hard time because I had an opportunity to love them. I had an opportunity to say I love them. I had an opportunity to show up, but I didn't. So those of you that have parents, parents are so dear to me, do what you can parents. You know, call them. You know, reach out in touch. Reach out in touch. Do your part. So at the end of the day, I don't guilt. You have none. I thank God I have, I have none. I have none with my loved ones. And I'm thankful for that. Do what you do. Why you can't. Tomorrow's not is promise. Remember this. Things can change in a length of an eye, just like that. Yes, they can. Yes, they can. So I want to encourage you to go through the process. God is going to be your source. 
God's going to be wanting to rebuild your mind. God is going to want it's going to renew your mind, renew your strength. He's going to want to be bring you comfort. He's going to be wanting to bring you peace, drugs, alcohol, all these different things that you try to um, not to feel the pain, to numb yourself, or because you don't want to go down. If you skip the process, you either anything, you can never skip the process. There's prison in the process. There's healing in the process. There is even um, revelation in the process. But you have to about it the right way. So, today, um, I hope that this video has helped someone or hurt someone or enlightened someone or blessed someone, um, whatever it may be. Uh, because some people talk about, you know, people, you ask, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. And maybe we can see you're not good. But it's okay to say, I'm, I'm not good. I'm not having a day. I'm a little sad. You're not having this. It's okay. Take people from you. I look for genuine. I love people that are honest. I love people that can just tell it like this. So thank you all for watching. I appreciate you all. Um, the Blue Evangelist Bailey, God bless you. And Sister Wendy, um, you are, um, you know, uh, share this video with one. Uh, take the opportunity to share it. So we join to others. So love them.